Good morning and welcome, or we should say good morning Pine Valley in the best Pastor Tim voice that I can do this morning. As you see, Pastor Tim is not with us. He is on vacation this morning, but still tune in, okay? We've got really... um, Great guest here for you this morning. I am Kim Collins. I am the pastor of discipleship here at Pine Valley, and I am joined with Pastor Barry, who is our pastor of congregational care. I'm also joined by Carl Marzoff, who is our minister of music, as well as um, Taylor. And we are so glad to have Taylor Lee with us this morning as our special guest. And he is our, I guess, minister of music, of contemporary music here at Pine Valley. And it's wonderful to have him with us this morning. So grab some coffee and join us this morning. I will tell you... um, This morning, it is National Pot Pie Day, (laughs) and I love a good pot pie, especially a good chicken pot pie. I mean, and I thought, how great, because we like to eat here at Pine Valley. I got to jump in on this one, because you know, up north, pot pie is made in a pot, not in the oven. I don't know what this oven (laughs) stuff is that y'all do down south. (laughs) Well, I'm going to have to go home and make some pot pie tonight, but I like to make a chicken pastry or casserole thing kind of like chicken and dumplings and stuff mm-hmm. but with the it weather we're having it was our sponsor that we were supposed to have it today <laughs> yeah well so if someone wants to make us a pot pie we will not object to it and we'll take it and eat it merrily and give you credit for it so um just a couple of quick <clears throat> announcements um, that we want to always remind you to go to our website pvumc.net for the latest updates and how we're phasing in um new um worship service or new um, discipleship classes. We're excited that October 4th, our 1115 um, worship service, it will be back in person. We want to remind you that to continue to sign up for worship, and that's, it's not a reservation or to hold my seat, but it helps us to get a count um, so we can know about uh, proximities and um, capacities in the rooms. Um, If you forget to sign up, please do not let that hinder you from coming. So just show up in anywhere um, anyway um, because we'll make a place for you also our discipleship classes are meeting several of them and so look on our website for that we have actually three that are uh, four that are meeting today we have pastor barry at 11 a.m and that's zoom and in person um mary stevens and i are leading uh the gideon bible study tonight and that's also zoom and in person and the kingdom men group is meeting here tonight at 6 30 as well as jill newsom is leading a uh, ladies bible study called the ladies upper room and it is also here at 6 30. we have sunday school classes that are starting to phase in um, some are in person and some are on zoom right now and some in october will come in our children and youth are meeting on sundays as well as we have a nursery just be sure to sign up so we can know uh, again um, volunteer wise how many we need for that but it is so wonderful to start come back into i mean it's almost like spring again where we're blossoming um so we're gonna have spring in the winter or fall in the winter so um we're excited about that but without further ado i'm going to turn over here to my left to carl and um carl is going to um help guide us through um taylor we're not going to put you in the hot seat and i i'd already said I was wondering where his base was, but he is not his base, as he reminded me, and that's a great thing. So it's great to see him, but it was like, you know, we could have had a little jam session here this morning. That would have been fun. You would have jammed, and we would have just enjoyed it. So yeah. anyway, so Take it's requests. great to have, have you here. So Yeah, yeah and, and um, if you had brought yours, maybe I could have brought mine. That would have been awesome. Well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> awesome. But we have to do that. But yeah, we'll have to do that sometime. Um, as, as a lot of the folks out here may not realize that we're both bass players as our <laughs> primary instrument and stuff. Um, mine is, tends to lean more towards the upright bass and mm-hmm. the, the acoustic bass and stuff. And you're just a, just a monster on the electric bass. I don't and know about all that. It's, it's, it's been just fun to watch you play. And I think we've gotten a lot of comments over the time that you've been here about, wow, that kid can really play that, that, that guitar. You know, he, they always call it a guitar. And they like, do. It's a bass. Yes. <laughs> Even my dad still calls it a guitar. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's, it's really nice to share that same love for bass that me and you have. That's a nice thing that, you know, and, um, Carl's just really great at the classical music and I have an affinity of love for that. So, you know, we can we we share a lot of the same common interests musically, which is nice when it comes to worship and things like that. Mm-hmm. 
But um, so how'd you get started in all this? I mean, how'd you find your way into the bass and stuff? So I started on guitar at age eight. My parents huh. had me do lessons, and uh, I didn't really enjoy it that much at first. Uh, my dad was persistent that I keep at it, and eventually, when it started to come together, I realized how much I loved it. It was like my passion. And uh, I got into the bass, I think, around 12. I started taking lessons with Steve Bailey, who was the bass player, musical director for Willie Nelson and some other people. He's a well-known player. Um, And he's now the chair of education at Berklee College of Music. And he kind of set the path for me, kind of showed me this is what you should do, this is what you should practice, this is how much time you should put into it, things like that. At and the time, though, he was living here. He was, he was living, living here in Myrtle Beach. Right, Myrtle Beach, and teaching at UNCW, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's how I had gotten to know him a little bit. Right, so mm-hmm. before he moved to Boston, he was like a local guy. Mm-hmm. And um, he really looked out for me, you know, and it was a blessing to, to meet that man because he changed my, my life path, I think, because he kind of was like, if you do these things in this order, everything will come together for you musically at the end of the, end of the road. So, and I think it did. Yeah, big time. Because while you were at Berkeley, you had some opportunities to go out on the road with some people. Yes. So it was about two years after I was out of school that I did this competition. It's called the Strange Arrange Competition. And what it implied was that you would take pop songs. A live band of musicians would play an arrangement of these pop songs, take four or five, mash them together, and try to make it really exciting and kind of show off. Oh, wow. And the judges were famous producers and singers and people looking for talent. And so we put all this time and energy into it, and we came in second place. And so I was kind of shattered because I had put like six months of everything every day into this. I was like, I'm going to win. You know, it was my mindset. Oh, I'm definitely going to win this. And um, two months later, I got a call from... Nissan Stewart, who is the musical director for Dancing with the Stars, and he's done American Idol and all these things. And he said, hey, man, can you be in Los Angeles tomorrow? (laughs) Tomorrow. I was like, if you pay. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I was like, you know, I can't afford a plane ticket, but if we can make these things happen, that'd be awesome. He's like, yeah, man, I got you covered. Um, He's like, we're going to be playing on David Letterman on Monday. I was like, okay. (laughs) You know, so this this is the big time. This is how it happens, I guess. And so my first artist I got to play with was Nico and Vince, and they have a song, Am I Wrong? Um, they're bordering a one-hit wonder type artist, but they, that one song they had was huge. And so that was like my foray into the music business and kind of forced me to move out to Los Angeles. And so that's kind of how I got to meet that whole crew of people. Yeah, yeah. So that led to some other things. Who, who were some of the other artists that I know you've worked with? And- so some some name dropping here you know (laughs) yes so i haven't necessarily toured with these people for extensive amounts of time but i have done one-offs or filled in for bass players um on things with Katy perry i played on a song of taylor swift's um i got to play a couple shows with fergie from black eyed peas so um i consider myself blessed to have been able to be around those kind of people who are really good at what they do and um same with the musicians and everyone involved. It was just a really awesome experience to see that level of things. Right. And it, it really, it ties in to what we do, mm-hmm. you know, because you see, you just, you, you want to strive for that, for that excellence. And, um, you know, that's what I really learned from my time doing that was just, if you're prepared and you're, and you're level headed, it can really take you far, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So you got to tell me then, why give up all that glitz and glamour? And uh, I mean, that's the high life, right? You know, right on the road with these big name people and and having folks take care of you backstage and bring you stuff. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. That's true. You know, so why give all that up (laughs) for ministry? How did did, did that transition happen? Well, I will tell you throughout all of my time touring, it was always pulling at my heart that I should be doing something for God. Um, from day one and I started basically touring at age 16 and I, I lie to you not I think from the age of 16 to about 26 there probably wasn't one week where I wasn't on the road at some point or doing something you know some kind of engagement where I was with an artist or something of some kind mm-hmm. and um, growing up I was very family oriented 
And I, I just was really searching for that love and that feeling, you know. And um, I came back to North Carolina not to move, and I played on a gig here, a wedding gig, and that's when I met Sarah, <laughs> who sings here with us in the bridge band, my wife. And um, she, it, we immediately hit it off, obviously. And um, we really talked about having a family, like, very soon after meeting each other. We just loved each other, like, from the get, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, once I married her, I just decided I didn't want to be on the road as much anymore because I wanted to focus on a family. Sure. It's like I got to see the awesome part of the business and the thing I will say though is there's a lot of parts of the music business I'm not hugely fond of. Mm-hmm. And that's I think a part that led me to ministry as well. Because I just I want to know when I die that I want to go to heaven and mm-hmm. I want to know the Lord and you know the best I can and use my time here and especially my gift to serve him you know, and use all my talent for him, basically. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I really appreciate the staff here because everyone here supports me in doing that always. And they always allow me to musically be myself, but still try to lift up others and things like that. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> I find a lot of students, you know, they, they, see the, they see the glitz and the glamour. They do. They see the wonderful parts of it. And they and you know and and that's attracts a lot of people. But it does. There is this really difficult. One of the most challenging jobs in the world, I think, is being a traveling musician. It is is a road musician because you're in a different place every night. You don't really get to enjoy those places. You're just constantly moving around and and getting to the next gig and spending all afternoon with setup. And, so true. And, uh, exactly. You know. You, you never really get to enjoy the places. I've been to all fifty states playing. But I, I can't really recall that much of the area where I've been. been because to Alaska <laughs> playing? Yes, <laughs> actually. <Seriously>? Yes. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yes. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, it's just when you're on a plane all the time or living in a hotel. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of preachers that do that kind of stuff too. So it's like it can be stressful because you don't really feel like you ever have a home base. Right. And, and there's guys who love it. I mean, our, there are. Our, our dear friend Joey Gore is on the road a lot. Right, he and thrives being in that. A, being a single guy, you know, it's it, he, he'll go jump on an airplane and, and be in the Netherlands or someplace, you know, playing with, with one of his artists that he plays with. And he loves that, be able to travel and, and get different places and things like that. But he's also single, which makes right. it a lot easier. I, I agree as a family man, it's, it's a lot more challenging because you got two boys at home. Two boys. Yeah. Um, and, Noah and Gabriel. And they're already playing some instruments, I understand. <laughs> they are, man. They, um, y'all know the Baby Shark song that's out there. That's their favorite song. They can sing it for you on cue and <laughs> dance to it in rhythm perfectly. And um, Not that you're proud or anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm super proud. <laughs> super proud. Noah, no, you know, Sarah has perfect pitch, and we found out that Noah has it. So oh. he's probably going to be a singer, which makes me so happy. Very cool. Yeah, so it's just... It, you know, there's no joy like having children, as y'all all oh, know. Amen. There's no joy like that. And um, I will say that that has brought me happiness like nothing I've ever known. And I feel that children are literally the greatest blessing from God, just from what I've experienced. Mm-hmm. Um, well, being a few years older than you, enjoy them now while they're young. <laughs> yeah. Well, I the love teenage how years are coming. <laughs> on your Facebook page, you'll have just some of your little jam sessions with um, the boys and they're running around you and, exactly. and you're just playing and they're just doing their thing too. And it's just so awesome to see you and your family do that. And yeah, and Sarah's just a powerhouse singer. She's oh, just amazing, man. amazing. So we're, we're very blessed to have you and your well, family you, here at Pine thank Valley. You. Very mm-hmm. blessed. Well, and we know that, that as, as the boys show, music is supposed to move you. It is. And, and it shows, yes. it moves them. Absolutely. Uh, very much. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. They're constantly moving. They really are. Mm-hmm. And even, even with your time in the ministry now, you still have opportunity. I know last year you, were, you did a big benefit concert down the, uh, in the Antigua. In Antigua. Yeah, yeah, I got to play for Rihanna, and it was, an, it was like Nico and Vince and Rihanna both together doing a concert yeah. uh, for Save the Ocean. And it was a really cool event. There was a lot of celebrities there and stuff. So, I mean, mm-hmm. every now and then, I think my name's still in the hat for if they need a bass player every right. now and then. Yeah. But they know I'm not going to relocate to Los Angeles or anything like that. You right. know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. that's one of the beauties, I think, of, of ministry work 
is we do get, as musicians, we get some flexibility to go out and do a concert here or a concert there Absolutely. on occasion and, and um, have the flexibility to be able to um, do that in com- combination with what we're doing here. I agree. Stuff, which is really cool. It keeps us fresh and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it keeps us well connected with the professional community and things to the, which benefits the church I in, agree. in other ways. And I agree completely. So, so it can be really cool. That's true. Um, you've also had the opportunity, I think you had a, a recent recording project. You guys had a CD come out last year? Yes. Lightning Man? Yeah, that was a project I've been working on. So I've always written music. Um, one of my dreams, I'm still working on it, is to get one of my songs in the movie because I've always loved film scores. I'm hmm. really into that. Like, uh, you know, The Lion King, for example. Simple movie. You know, it's a kid's movie, but the music behind it is just, I mean, you could spend your whole life studying that one song because it's just so emotional. And it, I love that part because you, being able to learn how to tie emotion into music is very beneficial because if you're trying to convey something, mm-hmm. if you want somebody to feel your pain or feel your happiness, you know, that's kind of where I'm at now in my music career and where I'm trying to think about music as and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Yeah, absolutely. One of the songs in there, tell us a little bit about The Prayer. The Prayer. That's, that's a really cool song. Yes, actually. And um, I've talked to Tim. I think we're planning at some point to maybe do that song for an offering. Oh, cool. Because it's kind of like a, um, yeah, I don't want to get emotional, but basically how the song was written was when Noah was born, he was in the NICU for 15 days. Mm. But when he right when he was born... He wasn't, his lungs were not formed yet because he was premature. And so I remember one of the doctors coming in and telling me that they just didn't know if he was going to make it. Mm. And I just remember like going home and just crying and begging the Lord to do his work and and heal my son. Mm. And he did (laughs) because two days later, the doctor came in there and said, I don't really know why, but we don't notice anything wrong with his heart or his lungs anymore. Oh, wow. And so that song is basically the feeling I had in that moment. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, and Sarah helped me write the words. Yeah. And, cause she was feeling it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, so it's, it's a real, it's a cry out to God, really. Mm. Like, kind of like David. David's my favorite person in the Bible besides Jesus, obviously. And um, I kind of try to model myself after him when I think about that kind of worship, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. I appreciate you asking about that, though, because well, that's a special song. That, on, special the, on the album, song. that's by far the most special song to us yeah. for that yeah. reason. And I think it's the intro to that song that we're using, like, on the WECT thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I took the intro and looped it so that we could go under the intros and stuff. Yeah, that sounds nice. <coughs> and, it, and it's very cool. It's just, just a really neat, neat song, and that whole CD. If somebody wanted to get a copy of that CD, how would they do that? They could actually get it for free on Spotify. Oh. If you have Spotify, you can watch, you can listen to it on there. Mm-hmm. It's on iTunes, and you can always just get a hard copy from me too if anybody wants one at the church. Yeah, but if there's anybody that still has a CD player, you mean? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's so harsh, but yeah. so does true, it come though. in eight track? <laughs> no, no, no. I have a lot of people asking about vinyl. Like, I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> Really cool. Yeah, well, well, vinyl's coming back though. Know. You know, I hear that. Yeah, yeah really I keep cool. you know the audio files are pushing pushing hard for that because you know you take all that digital stuff out of it, artifacts and things out of it when you when you go back to that pure analog that's vinyl true. stuff. But yeah, that's way before your time. So don't even <laughs> pretend like you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Have you Man. turned thirty yet? I'm thirty one actually. Oh, okay. So. We're catching up. We're catching up. We're way ahead. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let me ask you a question. And, and, and I know, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Yes. But I know part of what you said a little while ago about God using all of you and, and your musical talent. But part of your job description is, I think, a real challenge to people in your business. And that is as a worship leader. Right. Leading worship. And so as you are in that position, how do you do that? And I don't mean da-da-da-da-da-da-da, but how do you get out of the way and let God use you to lead people into worship? Right. I have noticed personally that if my walk with Jesus 
is 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 right and I'm lined up um that on Sunday mornings or just in preparation for the week of worship it seems like God just directs my steps like I I kind of move out of the way just like you said and he's able to use me in a way that's going to benefit his kingdom um you know and I I think as far as leading I do think that sometimes from a congregation standpoint, that thing I was just speaking about with emotion, showing that you're convicted, um, showing that you love the Lord or let people see that in your face is, um, can make people that are a little unsure more willing to open up, you know. Let the Spirit lead you. Yes, Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've we've certainly had those conversations, you know, um, that here at the church, we're very congregationally oriented. Yes. We're, as worship leaders, we're trying to get the congregation involved. And, and it, it can't be a performance. Right. But, and see, this is where I always find the double-edged sword, and I'd love you to talk about it, you know, but you have to have the confidence of a performer to get mm-hmm. out there on stage and be in front of all those people. Yes. But at the same time, you have to have the humility to get out of the way and let the congregation be the voice. I agree. And think about how much good music there is out there in Christian contemporary music. Mm-hmm. Think about the people that we mentally, unknowingly, kind of adjust to. And we're like, that's kind of what we hear, and that's what we expect, that's what we want, that's what we like, that's how we feel worship. So I do think that striving for greatness and um, really putting in the time preparation and musically understanding everything that's happening can, can benefit the worship because I just think that having all all the moving parts working together, you know, like the body of Christ, just every part working there, mm-hmm. it really makes everything happen, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, Amen. with God's help, of course. <laughs> it's you're worshiping, but you're inviting folks to worship with you. Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I think that goes along with anything we do. Like when we when we pray, we're just not praying, but we're inviting people into that prayer time, into into the sermon, into hearing and um, reading the word of God. So it's it's all of us worshiping. You know, we might be up there leading it, but we're worshiping with you at the same time. Yeah. Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. And you. It, it's almost a tangible feeling sometimes when everyone's really engaged in worship mm-hmm. and you feel the Holy Spirit. You know, it becomes tangible. It Amen. does. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, they can be very powerful moments. Um, very emotional moments sometimes for us on stage yes. when you feel yes. just everybody's on board. And yeah, yeah, that can be some pretty cool stuff. So, so if there were some people in the congregation, maybe they used to play guitar, maybe they you know have sung for years, but they just haven't, how, how would somebody new get plugged into the ministry? First off, you should try to reach out to me. Taylor at pvumc.net would be great. Um, just let me know what your experience is. If you've sang in church before or played in church, if not, that's still okay. Just reach out to me, and we can walk you through the process. Usually, um, to become part of the bridge team, we like you to be involved in some other ministries or at least part of the congregation for a while, kind of familiar with the layout of how music is is kind of being led and directed in worship. And um, But please, if anyone is interested or has a gift of any kind musically, please feel free to reach out to me or Carl, because we would really love to have you guys. Mm-hmm. It would be great to have some more Amen. singers and musicians. That Amen. would be awesome. And that's across the board. I'll, I'll echo that. Um, you know, maybe maybe praise bands aren't your thing, but handbells are. Right. Or, you know, choir, or you've got some children or grandchildren that are uh, interested in, in participating in, in um, uh, music ministries here at the church. Just reach out to us. Um, we've we've got uh, things from, what is it, two years old all the way up through. <laughs> so we have <laughs> musical opportunities that just abound at this church. <laughs> That's true. Um, and then we're it, getting ready to start back in... Mm-hmm. soon with celebrate recovery yep. and taylor also leads our band and musicians with cr mm-hmm. um and so that's also another great ministry if people are that like really is. i you know i can't on sunday mornings but friday nights might be a great great time for me to do that so yes. i encourage you to reach out to, to taylor because he's always looking for um 
people that want to lead worship with our, our Celebrate Recovery ministry. Right. Yeah, it's a very powerful service, yeah. CR is. And it's, I would say, uh, from a musician or a singer standpoint, it's a little um, more open, less stressful. It's just a, a very nice, inviting it's intimate. It's very intimate. And if, if anyone's trying to get involved with the music, sometimes I have them step into that first because it's just kind of like you don't have any stress about anything, you know, and they can just kind of see how they like it there before they actually become part of the team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what I've enjoyed about the, the musicians is a lot of these people that are doing it currently now have not done it for a long period of time. They, they were trained early on or, or, uh, and they picked it back up. Right. And, and a lot of them are, are in contemporary music, a lot of them are in traditional, uh, and in any way that, that you can do that yeah. and, and provide that gift, it's a blessing to us all. Yes. It is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so we like to eat, and we like good music here yes. at High oh, Valley. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You can tell that by the size of both budgets in those. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We, we, we buy a lot of food, yes. and we've got a great music staff. We have a passion for Jesus through music, and mm-hmm. uh, and speaking <laughs> of music staff, um, I think I think it's okay to to start talking about that. We've got um, we're getting very close to hiring a mu- uh, children's and youth mm. music director. Um, so that's coming down the pike here very soon, and hopefully we'll have an announcement in a few weeks uh, mm-hmm. regarding that. Hopefully. So that'll be really cool. Nice. So. Yeah, that'll be really cool. It won't be quite in time for the kickoff to make the announcement, I think, at kickoff this weekend, but it'll be soon thereafter and stuff. So, that's awesome. um, So what's next for the bridge? Anything you got exciting coming down the pike? Any new songs you guys been working on? Yeah, you know, we've been working on some of the newer Elevation stuff. Yeah, I try to... I try to take a lot of ideas from those churches because they just, not only do they have some of the best people doing it, mm-hmm. you know, they have some great writers. And the stuff that they're writing is mm-hmm. something that people can, the reason why I like it personally is because it's easy to sing most of the time. So people in the congregation can kind of get acclimated to it really quickly. And it's also fun for the band, which they like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, and, the, and those big churches, it's always... Um, uh, well, big churches, little churches even. I mean, if you find something, I, if we see something on one of their YouTubes or something that appeals, you know, plagiary is the highest form of flattery. Right, <laughs> right. So anyways, uh-huh. um, and, and as churches, we've all got the same goal. Exactly. You know, we're, we're trying to bring people to Jesus Christ. So whether we do that, um, you know, by using an element of someone else's worship service or whether we kind of create our own, it's it's all for God's glory. So, Absolutely, you know. It, it's I think that all that is uh, awesome. You know, whether it's Elevation or Bethel or you know all the different great churches and things that are out there and things. So, Amen. And Taylor, you also lead our um, youth band mm-hmm. that we have, and we haven't talked about them. And I know that's a great place where you started when you were young. Yes. So that's an opportunity for them to um, help. I guess, um, yes, mold um, their talent or share their talent. Or. Yeah, I love that age group because that's where, that's where I think personally that passion for music is like really budding. It's like kind of that's where they're going to decide, is this something I might want to actually do seriously, you know, all the time, uh, consider it as a career or, a, you know, education. Um, but here at the church, we are, we're very blessed to have a, you know, a numerous amount of really talented young kids which is, is kind of rare, honestly. Um, but they are all willing to learn, which I appreciate that a lot. You know, um, the, the youth kickoff thing we're doing on Sunday, that's going to be fun. Um, I have a special group of musicians that are coming in for that, and I think the kids will really enjoy that, getting to see that. Maybe that'll spark a little bit more of that. Like, okay, yeah, I want to go jam out or with Taylor or something, or something mm-hmm. you know. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. Well, Taylor, we appreciate you being here with Thank us y'all this for having morning. Me. And um, it's great for, um, I think, everyone to get to know. I think this has been great with our Coffee with Pastors because we've 
gotten to know not only the pastors but all of our staff right. and, and see that we are one huge team here at Pine Valley. It's not just one person, but we all are very passionate about our walk with Christ and um, and, and how we work as a team, and, and we just want that passion um, to show with everyone else. So um, we're just blessed to have them. So we thank you so much for tuning in to us this morning. Continue to look at our um, website for um, all of the latest updates. Remember that uh, we have worship tomorrow night, 615 on Mm -hmm. Thursday, Sunday morning, 630 on WECT. Then we have our um, 815 worship service and then our 945 worship service, as well as Sunday school at 945 for youth and for children um, and some adult classes and our nursery and just um, go to our sign up or call the (laughs) office if you need to. But it is so great and we appreciate you joining this um this morning um pastor barry would you uh have Just, a prayer and 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 also want to be sure everybody does remember that we will beginning october the 4th we will begin our eleven fifteen service right so so yeah. we don't want anybody to forget that so those three services 8 15 9 45 and eleven fifteen, will all be in full bloom on october the 4th so anybody come to any of those and Mm. be blessed right and we'll have more information um regarding um (laughs) those so continue to look at our website for that but pastor barry would you close us in prayer and also we just want to lift up a prayer um of blessing over taylor um, for his continued ministry and what god is doing through him here at pine valley and in the world. So. Right. Thank oh, well. you so much. And, and, and yes. The world needs prayer. Okay, yes. let's pray for Taylor. Lord, we just thank you for the gifts that you've given each one of us. Yes. Lord, we thank you today for our brother Taylor. Mm-hmm. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you've given him, for how he's accepted those gifts and how they're flourishing in him. And Lord, how he wants others to be able to enjoy the joy that he knows And Lord, we just pray that your blessing would be on him, that your anointing would be on his ministry. Lord, that you would use the gifts that have have given him, and Lord, that his ministry would flourish. And Lord, that people would be brought to him as he leads them in worship of you, and as you are allowing him to be front and center, Lord, but he gets out of the way and lets your spirit flow in and through him. Lord, I just pray for your blessing on my brother and that ministry. Mm. And Lord, as we look beyond Taylor, Lord, we thank you for this place called Pine Valley United Methodist Church. Lord, we pray your blessing on it and on us and that we might be used as your vessels. Lord, we look beyond that and we look to the leadership of our world and our nation. And Lord, we just pray that 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 would be godly leadership, that you would speak to them and through them. Lord, that you would use them to be leaders that would turn our world and our nation toward you. Mm. Lord, we just want to be used by you. We just thank you for the blessings that you've given us. And Lord, we know that we are blessed to be a blessing. And Lord, use us for your glory in all that we do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Again, it is so wonderful for to be with you this morning. We want to just say that we love you. God bless you. And uh, blessings to you on your journeys, our friends.